One of the advantages of having a single-handed backhand is being able to generate great spin and angle. This is because you have more freedom to have a larger swing and manipulate the racket on contact as you are not locked in to a two-handed frame. Grigor Dimitrov uses the extra freedom and flexibility in his wrist to create the angle cross-court seemingly out of nowhere. To execute this, Dimitrov needs to keep the contact point out in front, so he has room to come around the outside of the ball sharply, pull his right shoulder across his body through the contact to maximise the angle and fully open up on the finish. This makes sure the ball zips away when it lands. Wow! That's a world-class point there from Dimitrov. Talks about the use of that slice backhand. Still had to make the pass though. What an angle. Roger Federer is known for many qualities and his one-handed backhand is near the top of that list. When opponents work into this corner to try and open up the court, they often get burned as Federer finds an even better angle and suddenly they are in big trouble. There are three elements that help him achieve this. The first is an exceptionally early contact point, meaning he has more angle available to him as he is essentially further up the court. The second is his ability to use a steeper swing upwards to be able to find this angle whilst taking the net out of play. The last is a loose wrist through the contact so he can snap the hand through and get the crucial dip for the sharp cross-court angle. Backhand wing. Just taking the ball so early, isn't he? Federer is ripping through it into the big space. It is not uncommon for the single handers to play with a bit of flamboyance, and Denis Shapovalov is a great example of that. A single handed jump backhand is not a common sight on the tour, but boy, does it have serious impact when it is delivered well. Shapovalov is keen to take on this shot in a variety of situations as it is a technically flawless shot for him. The key to the Shapovalov jump backhand is significant hang time as you want to contact the ball right at the peak of your jump. Once he gets his elevation high off the ground, he drives the racket through using the back of his left shoulder to get the strength, but then he also needs some resistance to push against, which he finds by throwing his right shoulder and arm backwards. Shapovalov has momentum moving upwards on the jump, forwards with his swing and backwards with his right arm, but brings it all together seamlessly to deliver an impressive shot. Right on time, finishing. 15 One of the most powerful single-handed backhands around belongs to Stan Wawrinka. If he has time to set up properly on the shot, you better brace yourself as you know he is going to stand and deliver. Although a lot of the Vavrinka power comes from his physical strength, he really maximises it in his technique as well. In his early preparation, Vavrinka has the racket head high above his wrist, meaning that when he drops the racket head down, he has a bit of extra room, time and gravity to get up to top speed. Vavrinka also steps forward to meet the ball and the combination of his strength and racket head speed forms an almighty force driving down the court. Oh, brilliant. There it is. He got the chance to step That's into one and didn't he have? That was a lovely clean strike. Stefano Tsitsipas has quickly made his mark at the top of the game and his single-handed backhand has had a lot to do with his rise up the ranks. When he decides to take this shot down the line, it is often with force as he is looking to get the point finished there and then. Just after Tsitsipas contacts the ball, he gets an extra bit of lift by rolling up onto his toes. This means his swing can come through a little flatter, which is ideal for this particular shot as the ball will travel faster, straighter and is more likely to be out of his opponent's reach. It's a beauty, such a free-flowing, single-handed backhand he has. Single-handed backhands have their advantages, but they can also have vulnerabilities. It is tough to play this shot under immense pressure, as you only have the strength of one hand to cope with tough situations. Richard Gasquet is well known for his improvisation skills and can often come up with a bit of magic. 
Gasquet has such control of the racket with his forearm that he doesn't need to be in a good position or have much take back. He can still manufacture a shot out of nowhere. The only element he needs to get right is his contact point out in front and he is able to play delightful half volley pickups, find angles on the stretch, as well as execute shots you wouldn't even consider. Pushing a single-handed backhand back deep in the court with a heavy bounce can be very effective, with lots of players opting to take the ball on the rise with a backhand slice instead of falling back. Dominic Team does not need to rely on his slice or take a bigger risk by striking it on the rise, as the level of physicality he brings to his game means he can still hit winners where others would struggle. Much like his forehand technique, Team likes to have a big rotation through the wind-up so he can drive up and through with his legs first before unleashing the swing with a full release. Team plays his backhand from this tough position with the strength of two hands, but the spin and angle of one. Oh, that's really good, isn't it? Wrong footing the down with another one of those gorgeous laser-like backhands. Parita, 